So I'm back today to share with you the best horror and thriller books that I have read that were published this year, 2024, so far. And I like to do this kind of mid-year check-in to highlight some of the better new releases. And again, I will be doing a final list at the end of the year, so I'm definitely expecting this one to shift a lot because a lot of the best releases when it comes to creepy books come out in the fall, so usually this list looks totally different in a couple months. And so I'm very excited to share with you everything today, give you some ideas about which new releases I think are worth your time and money or get them from the library. I'm not pushing you to buy any books you don't want to, but if that sounds good, if you're interested in knowing what's the best so far, let's get started. All right, starting at number 10, we have Indian Burial Grounds by Nick Medina. This is a new book or a new starting place from this author. In it, we follow a young teenage girl who's looking to get a fresh start by returning back to her childhood home on reserve. There she has a new boyfriend and he's good to her, but right at the beginning of the story, something happens and basically her boyfriend is found dead and then she has to deal with the aftermath, trying to figure out what happened. This, you should be aware, is a horror story, so there are some supernatural elements at play. I think it's kind of fun going into it a little bit blind and finding out what is actually happening, but I really enjoyed those aspects to it. Again, I've compared this author to Stephen Graham Jones. If you're someone who loves horror with an indigenous bent to it, that's going to focus on that cultural aspect, but also have some good creepy moments, some good suspense. This one has it all. The main character definitely reminded me a lot of Jade from Stephen Graham Jones series, and so I would recommend it. It'd be stronger on the list if I had a more personal connection to it, but overall, I think it's a solid read, and I do think that people who, again, are looking for something like this in the subgenre are going to really have fun with it. Then at number nine, we have Bad Men by Julie May Cohen. And this is a thriller that follows a woman who is a bit of a vigilante. She essentially identifies what she describes as bad men, so men who have done horrible things to women, and then takes it upon herself to get justice, often actually killing these individuals and making them pay for their crimes. So this is one where we're following a character who is not necessarily a truly good moral character, but they very much are following their own moral code, and in their mind, they're doing the right thing. And so I'm always a fan of these morally gray protagonists where we are seeing them as the hero of the story, but we're also very aware that what they're doing is not the correct way to go about justice. And so I had a lot of fun with this one. It's perhaps a bit predictable. You kind of know from that setup where the story is going to go, but it definitely is a great response to some of the Me Too moments and kind of that woman anger rage and kind of what to do with it, but in a way that I felt was very smart and nuanced and wasn't man bashing to a degree. Like certainly it highlights terrible things that men have done, but there's also some really great male characters in the story, which I thought was a really well-balanced surprise and something that I think makes the book a lot more accessible and again, a lot more well-rounded and just a little bit less predictable at the end of the day. Next up is Small Town Horror by Ronald Malfi, and this is a story that follows a young man who is returning back to his childhood home. He is reluctant to go back there. He left his past behind, but he is pulled back in to help out his friends, and of course it reveals or touches on the history of the town and kind of the evils that were there. And if you can't tell from that general synopsis, this is an incredibly tropey book that leans into the small town evils. If if you love books in the vein of id and are looking for something similar, this book hits on all those elements. So again, I don't think it's the most unpredictable, never seen it before kind of story, but I think it does those tropes very well. It was very comforting to read, and I just think that Ronald Melfi is just a solid writer. He knows how to write a good story. He knows how to write good characters. I had a good time reading this when I flew through it in just a single sitting on a plane, and I think if you're looking for something like this, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Next is Where Sleeping Girls Lie, which is a young adult horror book that follows a girl attending a boarding school. Something happens, her roommate disappears, and then she takes it upon herself to investigate and try to figure out what is going on. This is one that I actually gave a mixed review when I first talked about on my channel because of the fact that it was very hard to get into. I found it very slow paced. It didn't really have a good hook, and I kind of just pushed myself along knowing that I wanted to see how it was all gonna come together. And again, as a reviewer, I tend to finish books where I would otherwise encourage other people to read a book or let a book go if it's not necessarily hooking you in pretty soon. But this is one I'm glad I stuck it out because while it had a rough start for me, it had a fantastic ending. And it is the kind of book that has grown in my mind and memory as I think back about it because it just had a really 
bang of an ending. It really dealt with some heavy topics, so definitely some content warnings for you to look up if you're concerned about some of the subject matter that might be in there. But for me, it was a book that was memorable, and I think I need to actually go and adjust my Goodreads rating because of the fact that if a book leaves me thinking about it after I finish it, after I've moved on to something else, that is always a good sign. I think it deals, again, a lot with some of the topics I love, like toxic female friendship, just toxic student relationships. I think anytime you're in a boarding school, it just amplifies the difficulties between those individuals, those relationships, good or bad, are just taken to the nines. And I think that this book did a great job of doing that. It's the same author who wrote Ace of Spades, which is kind of a Gossip Girl knockoff. And so if you're looking for more terrible teenagers doing terrible things, this one definitely scratches that itch. It's a slower start, a slower burn, but once it gets going, it really gets going. And in my mind, the ending really made it worth the ride. Next, Next is The Teacher by Frieda McFadden, and this is the thriller that I had such a good time reading this year. In some ways, it almost could be higher on this list. I think objectively it belongs here, but my enjoyment when reading it makes me think it should be a little bit higher, so keep that all in mind. This is one that follows a few different perspectives, one being the student who has gotten in trouble in the past with making insinuations about a teacher, and then we also follow a teacher who has taken this young student under their wing, and then we also follow the spouse of that teacher, and everything is kind of up in the air. And so it's a story that deals with the general topic of potential inappropriate relationships between students and teachers. And specifically, it deals with the idea that you can make false accusations that can lead to very serious circumstances, or in some cases, those accusations are true, and then the followed is necessary. And this is one where I'm trying to be purposely very hazy about it, because I think some of the fun or intrigue with this book is really trying to sort out fact from fiction and who is the villain, or is there any villain in the story? There were some good twists and turns, some things that were kind of predictable, and some things that did catch me by surprise. Again, it's just the kind of thriller that I look for, where it's honestly a good ride. It's escapist, it's engrossing. I recognize not everyone wants to touch this subject matter, and I completely respect if you don't want to read this one, but if you're open to it, I do think it's respectfully handled. And while there definitely is some thrills built into the book and turning it into a page turner, I think that the author is careful of not going to any of those squicky places that tend to make a book more unreadable. So if you're open to the subject matter, I thought this one was really well done, a really gripping story, and again, one that was just so much fun to read and just a really good time, which isn't that what we're always looking for when we pick up a book? At least I am, usually. Now, breaking into the top five is a book I'm excited to talk about because this is the first time I mention it on camera here, and that is The Eyes of the Best Part by Monica Kim. This is a book, a new release that I really enjoyed and haven't reviewed officially yet, but I um, guess I'll do that here. It's a story that follows a Korean-American young woman who has a lot of messy family life. Things are just going on around her, and she's just trying to get through it all. She has some very visceral dreams. She dreams of these very gruesome eyeballs, and then within the story, there's also these deaths that are piling up, these killings and bodies, and everything kind of comes together. It's a book that, honestly, I haven't reviewed yet because I wasn't entirely sure how I feel about it. It's kind of messy and in terms of the narrative. It definitely has that like fever dream type of more out of the box descriptions. It's kind of a book where you're reading and you're like, what am I reading? But at the same time, I really like a book like that. I love that it's gruesome, it's dark, it goes there, it doesn't shy away from those aspects. It deals with Korean culture and I think will really appeal even more to readers that have that background themselves. But from the outside, I thought it was still a very interesting read and I love those details that were sprinkled in. Overall, I really enjoyed this one. I obviously recommend it, otherwise it wouldn't be on this list. And I would love to know if you've checked it out yourself because in my mind, it's still a little bit of an under gem. I only know a few people who've read it and everyone else who has really enjoys it, so I like to get the word out a little bit more. Then at number four, we have Craft by Emma Lima, a book that I recently reviewed on my channel. This is a story of a woman who sleeps with the devil and all the terrible things that happen afterwards. It is somewhat of a short story collection, but everything is interwoven, and I almost describe it as slice of life horror because it's not as suspenseful or as dramatic as other books might be in a genre like this. Instead, you really follow them through their day to day. And the strange underlying creepiness and suspense and eeriness that comes in the time leading afterwards. And so I just think it's so unique. It's a book I really appreciate because it's different 
and I can see it not necessarily being for everyone, but I really enjoyed my time with this one. It's uneasy. Again, it's a lot more subtle and quiet. So if you're someone who likes those aspects, if you're looking for something that's going to have the horror elements right in your face, it's not going to do that. But if you know what you're getting yourself into, and if you're looking for that quieter read, this is a little underhyped gem, which again, maybe it's not as underhyped as I think so. I might just need to catch up on more YouTube videos, but I think that more people should be reading it. Then at number three, we have Youth Juice, another book I just recently reviewed on my channel. This one follows a woman, a bit of an ugly duckling, who gets the opportunity to work for this makeup company and gets to sample their precious moisturizer, which of course tends to have uh, some evil underlying elements to it. The story goes from there. This is one that is compared to The Devil Meets Prada, to American Psycho, and I continue to rephrase that because of the fact that it really does hit on what this book is, what you're going to get. And I had a lot of fun with this one. It again deals with beauty culture and toxic female friendships and just all of those elements that I really just tend to be drawn to in stories. And again, at the same time, it is a proper horror story. It has those creepier elements to it that I think are well done. And I had a good time reading this one. If you share my taste in books, I think that you'll enjoy this one too. As a debut, I wish this one had punched a little bit harder at some of the horror elements, but regardless, it's at a great position on this list for a reason. And again, I obviously recommend it. Then at number two is is Disturbing the Dead by Kelly Armstrong, the third book in a historical thriller series that follows a police officer who ends up back in time in historical Scotland. She ends up working for someone who helps to solve cases. In this third book, there is this individual who is found mummified, and so they have to figure out what is all going on. And this is just a series that I am obsessed with. I binged through books one and two and I had been dying for this third book to come out. I've read it twice now since I got my hands on a copy and I do recommend it. I just had a great time reading it. Again, it's place as high as it is largely based off enjoyment. I think that if you're going to read the series, you do want to start back at the beginning. And this one is definitely much more on the thriller mystery side, so it doesn't have specific horror elements to it. But it's just the kind of story that is just, again, very easy to read and fall into and escape into and I love the characters, I love the humor, there's a little bit of romance potentially going on within here and I'm just hooked. So if you love things like in the vein of Kate Burkholder series, this is another one I'd recommend picking up because while it's a different genre to a degree, it has that same quality of just wanting to read book after book after book because you just want to spend more time with the characters and go through the mysteries and figure it out. And yeah, if you can't tell, I just had so much fun with this one. And at the number one spot, I'll say that it's probably not the book you're expecting to be here, but the reason for that, keep in mind, is that I also still need to put out my favorite science fiction published in 2024. So the book you're expecting here is probably going to be in that video, I'll give you a hint. But the book that made this list is First Light by Liz Curran. This is the second book in a series that starts with with Night's Edge, a book or backlist title that I absolutely loved. It was featured already in a video. So I'll keep it brief. This is a piece of vampire fiction following a young woman who was trying to survive. She has to deal with the repercussions of being a vampire while still trying to live a life. This series I describe is very slice of life. It deals more with the mundane parts of life rather than just action-packed scenes with gruesome vampires. And for me, I loved it. I think the prose is great. The characters are well-written and complex, and I just love spending time with them. I do prefer book one, but of the new releases, this is still the strongest dark fiction title I've read this year so far. And I do recommend the series, but again, start at the beginning because book one is amazing. And if you just want to spend more time with characters like I did, you'll be happy to go on to book two, which again is completely solid and I do recommend. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And please consider sticking around and subscribing because yes, at the end of the year, I'm going to redo this list with my final favorite books published in 2024. And like I said, when it comes to dark fiction, all the good books come out in the fall. So I pretty much guarantee this list is going to look drastically different in a couple months and I can't wait to share the final results once I know what they are. And so if that sounds good, I hope you stick around. If you want to support me with this video, you can give me a big thumbs up. You can drop a comment, even if it's just a little emoji. And yes, very soon I'll be putting out my best science fiction fantasy published in 2024 so far. So look out for that video soon. All right. Talk to you then. Bye.